for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about the Spartan rock saw, also known as a wheel saw or an earth saw. And we would like to tell you a little bit about its features, its benefits, and also its proper use and operation, as well as proper maintenancing of the product. So what this saw is, first off, is a saw that is used to cut macadam or asphalt or concrete. And this particular saw is an 18 inch cover depth wheel that will give you a full 18 inches of cover depth cutting in addition to two and a half inches of wide slot cutting. We also have an optional wheel that can cut four and a half inches wide as well as 18 inches deep. In addition to that, we have an additional saw sized up one size from this saw, which is our 2400 series, and that unit goes 24 inches of cover depth, can also cut either two and a half inches wide or four inches wide. That saw, the 24 inch saw, can only be used on a skid steer loader that is equipped with high flow auxiliary hydraulics. Today, we're demonstrating a standard flow saw uh, on a Kubota model SVL90-2, which has standard auxiliary hydraulic flow. And this particular machine has a flow of 25.1 gallons per minute, which is not ideal for this particular attachment, but nonetheless, we wanted to show it because of our saw's capability of having three different motor selections. So we have three motors that can try to accommodate all the various brands of skid steers out there from standard flow to mid flow to high flow. This motor here is our standard flow motor. The mid flow motor range and the high flow motor range again is to marry to other machines that have higher horsepower auxiliary hydraulics and uh, that makes us unique in the industry by the way. None of our competitors have this ability. Most of our competitors simply offer a high flow motor, a single motor that requires high flow auxiliary hydraulics, which again limits which uh, um, brands of machines that you can use this type of, of attachment on. So I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the saw, its features and its benefits. Starting from the front here, uh, we'll do a quick tutorial around and telling you basically that this saw mounts to your skid steer frame like any other skid steer attachment. You have the two pins which drop down uh, vertically uh, on any universal skid steer attachment and we'll show you a little bit later how that's done. In addition to that you have three auxiliary hydraulic couplers here. You have your your main send and return, which is your male and female, in addition to your return drain line, which is very important on this type of attachment with the pressures and the flows that it permits and produces so that you don't have spiking. Uh, the return line simply takes the oil back into the reservoir of the machine. And uh, from there we have the hydraulic motor, which sits in a protective motor housing. Uh, this motor again on this particular unit is for a standard flow machine. It goes into a gearbox and then the output shaft that goes into the saw wheel itself which spins the saw. Now the performance of the saw is directly married to the machine that's running it. And I want to explain a little bit more about the importance of the machine that runs an attachment like this. This machine being that it's running 25 gallons a minute will dictate the speed and the RPM speed of our saw. So with a saw of this nature, you always want to start the unit at an idle and then engage the hydraulics and then you ramp up your RPMs from that point to full speed and letting the saw down at its heel point and then setting on our skid plate as you see here, the skid plate should be touching and engaging the ground as you do your depth control using the saw to cut down into the, to the material that you're cutting. So at full RPM you're going to get maximum performance from our saw and again RPM dicks, dic dictates the speed of the saw wheel so it's very important at that point when you're about to ground engage 
to use the, the RPM speed of the engine to peak out your machine's pump and hydraulic oil flow and pressure, which is very important. So once you, uh, we, you have the, the saw moving, you start cutting into the earth. We have a viewfinder uh, that's easily uh, visible from the operator's cab compartment, which will tell you from zero to 18 inches how deep the saw is cutting uh, without guesswork. In addition to that, we have a radial arm here, which allows the operator to set down on a painted on a painted mark that will allow the operator from clear view to see the travel wheel and keep the saw in the direction that the operator prefers in a straight line so that he doesn't miss his mark uh, from here to say you know 100 yards down the field. Uh, from, from there I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the, uh, the tie down points uh, which is critically important when you're traveling with the saw on a trailer. We have D-rings in the center of the unit. We have another D-ring on the frame as well as D-rings on the other side to give you all the, uh, the points of tie down that are required to legally transport our saw down the road. Okay, so on this side of our saw, what you'll see is a hydraulic cylinder which is for our depth skid shoe adjustment which allows you to easily adjust the depth of the saw as it's cutting smoothly and efficiently. In addition, we have wings which act as plow blades on both sides of our saw which plows the material that you're uh, excavating out of the earth in front and to the sides of our saw which is important to keep a nice clean slot uh, and all the debris pulling away from the right and left side of the ditch. Here you'll see we have a stow pin. This pin is strictly for towing the unit and or when stowing the unit as we have it sitting currently you do not want the weight of the saw sitting on the rock wheel itself. That's for our skid shoe to do and that's how we have it sitting so that you can see. To disengage this we have a cotter pin key that you simply remove. The pin will pull out and then you can move the slide guide easily from that point forward. Over here you'll see our other tie down point for transportation. Uh, notch step treads as well for safety of entering and exiting your machine as well. Okay, so now we want to talk about how to properly attach or engage your auxiliary hydraulic couplers or fittings as well as the electrical attachment control kit uh, which gives you the multi-functionality uh, uh, multi of the attachment's side sweeping ability uh, as well as the, the depth skid shoe adjustment, raise and lower. So first off, I'd like to explain the importance of the hydraulic system that runs our saw. It's emphatically important that the machine's hydraulic oil system is maintained properly to spec so that the oil viscosity is clean and has a, a, a hydraulic oil filter that's also doing its job by uh, removing contaminants that might be in the machine's hydraulic system. Very important. A lot of a lot of people that run these machines will neglect the fact that their machine's auxiliary hydraulics is running our attachment, which contaminated oil could damage our internal components as well as your machine, create unnecessary heat in the oil, which will dramatically affect the performance of our salt. So again, proper maintenance of hydraulics in your machine is very important. With that said, I'd like to move to the fittings and what they do. So the two main fittings that have flush face couplers, which is a standard now in the industry with most every major brand of skid steer loader and compact track loader, uh, makes this task much easier than in days past with the older Pioneer couplers, which tended to leave and which tended to give us issues with connecting and disconnecting. So in today's world, the flat face coupler couples much easier and it also eliminates dirt from entering the system by 
uh, a positive uh, shutoff with a spring inside the coupler, which allows you to wipe the coupler clean and also stow it easier. One thing you do not want to do with any hydraulic attachment is allow these hoses or fittings, once disengaged off the machine, to drop into the dirt. That, that is one of the few ways that you can introduce dirt into your skid steer's hydraulic system. So again, very important. Whenever you disengage your couplers, stow them neatly on the attachment itself and do not permit them to hit the dirt. Okay, so now I want to talk about the proper execution of the auxiliary hydraulic couplers and how to get them on and off properly and efficiently. First off, you have three couplers on this attachment. You have your main send and return line as well as your drain line. Now, with a hydraulic attachment of this nature, it's very important to make it easy to disconnect and connect these couplers is to first connect your drain line and then the drain line would be the last off. So it's first on, last off. So what we're going to do right now is demonstrate how to disconnect the coupler. So we're going to remove the male coupler and you simply pull the collar back and you can see the fitting comes off very easily and you can see that it's got a flush face to it which again you never want to drop in the dirt. You always want to make sure you wipe them clean before you disconnect them so that not introduce dirt into your skid steer's hydraulic system. So the next one that we're going to remove is our female coupler. And again, another flat face coupler, um, easy to disengage and to engage. And the final coupler is your return line, which again, you pull the collar back, it simply disengages. So that is the proper way to disengage. Now we're going to, we're going to engage the couplers as if the machine is just being introduced to the attachment for the first time. And again, uh, this coupler, the drain line would be first on, last off. So we're going to engage the drain line back on. You simply line it up uh, and you push and then it will engage itself and lock. Now in this valve body, there's a detent which allows you to depressurize the auxiliary pressure flow in your machine. And that's important to make it easy to engage our coupler into your machine's auxiliary. So what we're going to do is we're first going to engage our female coupler into the male coupler of the skin steer. And next we're going to do our male into the female. Now sometimes you, you will have to apply steady heavy pressure depending on if there's some bleed off pressure still in the lines of your attachment. But usually if you disengage and engage properly, the system pressure will release and that should not be an issue. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is the electronic control kit, which this machine requires because it has multi functions to it. Uh, for example, this saw can centerline uh, saw as well as traverse to the right side of the skid steer so that you can offset saw in the event that that might become necessary if you want to get closer to a curb or a building side. Ideally, you always want a centerline trench with uh, your saw so that uh, it, it takes uh, and puts less stress on the boom arms of your tractor. So the reason why we need an, an electronic 12-volt uh, plug hookup is to be able to, in addition to spinning the wheel and the saw, which your hydraulics do primarily, the electronic kit will allow you to do the multifunction, which is electric over hydraulic, which sends a current uh, to the cylinder that sweeps the saw right and left and uh, 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 adjusts your depth skid controller. So on most machines and most brands, we have the optional um, harness kits, most being an 8-pin or a 14-pin Deutsche Electronic kit that we can marry into your machine so that you can use your machine's functions off your drive steps, which makes that process a bit neater, more convenient, and easier for you as the operator. Unfortunately, this machine, the Kubota tractor, has not addressed the multifunction ability with their drive sticks. So we have to use a separate option, uh, which is our universal attachment control kit control box, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I want to show you first where the 
the kit would normally plug in if we were to make a factory harness kit that would marry into your machine uh, most kits are mounted right on top and most brands do this uh, from Bobcat to Caterpillar to Takahuchi throughout the lineup of most major brands you'll see an electronic control kit that is plumbed on the machine usually an option when you buy the machine up front so you always want to make sure you check with your dealer uh, before you make your final purchase on your machine especially if you're going to run more exotic attachments like a planer or in this case a rock saw you want to make sure that you have the uh, front auxiliary electronic uh, control kit on your machine because that'll make things much easier for you going forward. Okay so here is the universal electronic attachment control kit that we provide that can be run with any brand machine. Now this is a 12 volt system and we need 12 volts to our control box to activate it to give you the, the ability to do the multifunctions that are required. So there's several means and ways of doing this. Uh, we have uh, battery leads that can go back directly to the battery terminals, to the positive and to the ground or in this case on this Kubota SVL-90 uh, there is a plug that is behind the seat set by the factory by Kubota that we can marry uh, our harness into to provide this controller with the 12 volts required to operate it. So we're going to zoom in on the controller and I'm going to simply tell you which uh, button is for which function. So uh, to set the, uh, the depth of the skid shoe for depth, you simply have the north button for raising, the south button for lowering the sole, and then you have your east and west uh, directional arrow buttons for uh, traversing the saw either to the right or back to the center uh, and it's infinitely variable where you can adjust that at whatever uh, you prefer when you're sawing. Okay so now we want to discuss the speed sensor control valve that is also standard equipment on our rock saw and what this does is it allows the operator to adjust the side sweep and the depth control so that he can feather it according to his specification or his comfort level or to his machine spec. Some machines have more hydraulic pressure or flow than others which can create chattering or accelerated movement right to left or more importantly up and down when you're trying to set the saw's depth control. So you want that function to, to be smooth and, tr and tr to traverse in a way that the operator has full control of the saw as it is sawing. That's very important. So what you simply do to adjust this valve which will increase or decrease flow to the hydraulic cylinders that sweep the saw left and right and to the depth controller. So to adjust this valve there's a there's a lock nut that you would back off and then you would counter rotate or clockwise rotate the screw, uh, the thumb screw here, to adjust your pressure to your desired flow so that it meets the uh, requirements of your machine. Okay, so now we want to talk more specifically about the Kubota SVL90-2, which has a unique plug-in harness that sits behind the operator seat. So you must first pull the seat in its forward position, recline the seat completely forward so that you can access the harness that we need to plug our auxiliary hydraulic kit into and you'll find that there's two factory plugs in this unit. The first plug is not the plug that we need to plug into. It's, it's for another function that has nothing to do with this purpose. The second plug however comes in a housing and you'll see that it's locked in a protective housing and we're first going to disengage it out of that housing which is the rainproof housing for it. You press in, depress the lock, pull it out, and now you'll see the pins. If, if you'll see the orange housing pin, that is what we need to plug our harness into for the electronic control kit. So we're going to grab the other end of our harness, which we've specially designed to meet this spec, and now you simply line the peg pins up. They can only lock in in one position, and then you simply press them together, push until you hear a click, and they lock together.
So it's as simple as that. Okay, so now we want to talk about the uh, depth controller uh, that gives the operator clear visibility of how deep the saw is cutting while in operation. So the perspective that you are currently looking at is obviously from seated in uh, the operator's compartment looking out towards the saw. And right now we have the saw set at basically zero. So it's in a stowed position, but once you start operating the saw and you use the function of the auxiliary hydraulic control kit, which I'll bring back into the shop for your benefit, uh, this button here would lower this bar down as this button here would raise it back up, which gives you depth control. So again, you can easily see from here whether you're at 1 inch, 2 inch, 6 inch, 12 inch, or at full depth, which of course on this saw would be 18 inches, and on our optional 24 inch saw you can go of course down to 24 inches. Alright, so now we want to talk about our wheel, and this is where the rubber meets the road. Obviously, with this attachment, this is where we do all the work. So with our saw, you will see, if you look closely, these bolt patterns here, which allows us to bolt on in sections our holders that actually hold the bits that uh, actually excavate the asphalt or concrete. Why this is important? Our brand uh, is separated from all others in this respect. This is what separates the Spartan rock saw from all others. This ability to be able to change out your holder section is new technology that we've pioneered. And what this does, it permits you that in the event that you damaged a section of this wheel or holders on the wheel, you do not have to expunge and replace the entire wheel of the saw, which is where the majority of the cost of the attachment is. So what we allow you to do is simply unbolt a section, buy replacement sections from us, and simply bolt them on, and you're done. So with other competitor saws, if you were to damage holders, you could not accomplish that task as easily and the holders are welded on to each section. As you see, there's uh, seven holders per section and your, and your fittings or your teeth bang into the holder. So it's important that uh, as a holder, uh, you want to protect the holder with the bit. The, the bit themselves, and we'll talk a little bit more about the bits and how to keep them maintenance and so forth, but they protect the holder. If you were to shear a holder, Again, you would have two options. You could simply buy a holder and weld it back to this section, or you could replace the entire section. That's your call. But again, this is very important in the design of our saw, which gives you a huge benefit in the life of the saw and the return on investment of this saw over our competitor saws. You'll also see that we have a cutout in our saw, reason being why we do that is to eliminate unnecessary weight in the wheel so as to make it easier on the skid steer to turn the wheel which is important when you're doing this type of work. Okay so now we want to address the uh, the bits and the skid shoe a little more closely to explain the function and the serviceability of, of, of this area which is very important to proper maintenance and performance of our saw. So first I'd like to point out the skid shoes once again the skid shoes are there primarily for uh, stability. As you do your depth control and as you're sawing, you're going to be riding on our front skid shoes. This, again, is a unique design of our saw, which gives you the bat wings on both the right and left side of the saw wheel, which permits the operator uh, the ease of ability of gaining his depth as to how deep he wants to run the saw. Now once he's engaged and he, and he gets to the depth that he needs to be at, the saw will stay stable riding on this skid shoe and plowing the spoils away from the ditch line on the right and left side of the ditch, uh, which makes for a much cleaner job as well and keeps throwback to a minimum, which is important when you're excavating a trench ditch so you don't have to go back and clean further with an a, a angled point shovel. So again, the depth uh, skids are for stability and depth control, 
and the bits themselves which we talked earlier about the holders and how you can replace the sections now we want to address the bits very important every day before the operator is to use our saw he should inspect the wheel saw completely and make sure that the bits all of them are spinning freely uh, with the touch of the fingers and as you can see me spinning these right now that's how they should spin at all times all your bits should be cleaned and maintained uh, and removed of debris sometimes you may have to use a high uh, PSI pressure washer but usually just banging on them will will uh, release the debris that may get lodged underneath the bit holders flange now you'll see these bits and there's many different styles and types but the selection of bit that we've chosen has a flanged head or collar at the bottom of the uh, the carbide bit and reason being is we want to protect the weld end holder shank which is very important this is something you do not want to wear out because you, uh, the cost will rise on maintaining and operating the the saw whereas the bits are easily replaced and they are not as costly to replace but they should give you um, excellent life if maintained properly by allowing them to spin freely now we also include our installation tool which you can see here and basically the collar of the tool or neck would be secured underneath the flange or head base collar of the bit and with uh, the strike of a mall hammer usually it'll dislodge the bit to the point where you pry it out and disengage the bit and then simply bang a new bit in that position so that is it in a nutshell for maintenance if you do this your saw will give you excellent performance year after year with minimal cost and maintenance. Okay, so next we want to address the proper operation of the saw. We're going to demo the saw in just a minute, but before we do that, I want to give some ex explanation because as you see it in operation, it's a little hard to decipher exactly the proper technique. And if you use this technique, it'll allow the operator to use the saw in a smooth, stable fashion, which is what we want, so that you don't bind the saw into the trench ditch. So here on the back corner side to the right and left side of our saw, we have trail wheels. They're caster wheels, they're made out of heavy steel, and they're made to carry the weight and load of the entire saw on the heel of the attachment. So the correct way to start sawing is to bring the load arms of the tractor or skid steer all the way down to the frame, sit on the, the, the trail wheels on the heel, and then you would angle the attachment to about a level point and then use the skid depth controller at that point to gain your depth and once at depth is when you would start uh, traversing forward and cutting your slot or trench. 